Hello easy fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home and DIY projects every single week. Today we're in my living room and if you can't already tell by the title, we are going to make over this entire space. A big goal of mine when we first moved into the house was to finish all the common areas before the year ended. And although this video is coming out after the new year, I am completing this before December 31st. So I'm excited to get another space done and I quickly wanted to show you guys what we're working with because right now, now we have some of it set up, but it's not exactly how it should be. So I definitely want to paint, add in some new curtains, a new decor, and just restyle this whole space. All right, so this is what the living room looks like. We have some beautiful windows, which are still covered by the temporary blinds. So we're getting rid of those in this video. I cannot wait because honestly, it's been really dark in this space and I can use all the light I can get. So new curtains, for sure. And right now, this is the layout that we have going on. We're actually still using this table as our office. We like to watch TV while working, so this is kind of here right now, but definitely has to go. We've decided that we want this to be the TV wall. We're still trying to figure out if we want to move this in the future, maybe. If I pan over behind me, this is where the fireplace is, and the previous owner had the TV above the fireplace, so maybe one day we'll switch out the whole layout, but for now, we're keeping it over here. Also, I don't know if you guys can tell, but we did not finish painting when we did the fireplace makeover. So today we're going to cover this whole area. We have a beautiful armchair, which is actually gonna go into Brian's office, but for now we're using it in the living room. And then our beautiful sectional. I love this so much. And all of the beautiful furniture that you're seeing today is actually from Castlery, who's today's video sponsor. So we're quickly gonna rewind to when we unbox them and put it all together because honestly, I am in love. The day that I've been waiting for has finally arrived. Our furniture is here. I cannot believe it. We have our couch over here, an armchair, as well as a TV console, all from Castlery. We have been waiting months for this because there's really nowhere to sit. We use this little table over here to edit. That is our office. And then our TV is still on the floor. So I'm ready to unbox and build everything. Castlery creates stylish furniture with quality craftsmanship, time-tested durability, and fairer pricing. They've cut out the middlemen to give the customers the best pricing and experience possible. After I placed my order with them, they were very communicative with me, and I had many updates from when things were being shipped, and it was really easy to set up a delivery date and time on the phone. That way, I knew exactly when all of my items were coming. Their designs can suit any style from contemporary to mid-century modern, and I think I got a pretty good mix of pieces from them. I really Really love how I can mix and match the styles, but it all works together really nicely. So I'm trying to be better about designing a space that meshes both Brian and I's style together, especially in a common area like the living room. So I let Brian pick out the TV stand, and this is the Strato TV stand in the long version. They also have a shorter version, but this one is perfect because we have a 65 inch TV and it's been a little trickier to find a console that is long enough. So this one was perfect. Everything was already built and it was so easy just to attach the legs and put it up. This piece is very mid-century modern, but the rounded edges on it gives it a really sleek look. And again, I am a sucker for black with wood tones, so this is perfect. And it's also a very functional piece because there's ample storage on the shelves for decor. And behind the doors, there's so much space for all of our board games. This is actually another piece that Brian got to choose for his future office. So this is the Ethan armchair. And we just love the look of the charcoal fabric against the metal black legs with that wooden frame. It is so good. And even though this is for the office, it's definitely gonna work in our living room in the meantime. This armchair is comfy and deep and it's also a great spot to cuddle up with a book in. We even had Brian and my cousin both sit in it at the same time over the holidays. So it is quite a large piece. And if you guys like the style of this one, it also comes as a sectional, a sofa, an ottoman, and even a chaise so you can get a complete set. 
I have been eyeing this sectional sofa for quite a while and I think it is so beautiful. This is the Owen Chase sectional sofa in natural and the fabric is called opal beige. There are two options for left or right facing and we just had to have a sectional in our space because we are big movie people in this house. I love that this is comfy and spacious without overwhelming our living room. And while I was on the hunt for a sofa, I really wanted something that was light and bright but easy to take care of. So the heathering in the fabric is going to be amazing to hide any little stains or marks in it. This is one of those couches that looks exactly like it does online and I am just so obsessed with it. I know this is just the beginning, but look at how good the living room is looking. I can't believe I actually have a place to sit and relax and watch TV and it's so comfy and so pretty. If you guys are liking what you're seeing and wanna see more of Castlery, I'll have a link down below to all of my items as well as their whole entire collection. It was really nice to have this all set up when my family came over and they gave us so many compliments. This couch also comes in a different color and wood finish, so I cannot recommend them to you guys enough. Now that you've seen what we're working with so far, I'm actually going to cover everything and then we're gonna to get to painting. One, two, three. Oh my god, guys, it feels like we just moved in again. It's so weird seeing this so empty. It's been such a mess for so long. So now I'm gonna go ahead and prep the walls, which is the most fun part of any paint project. There are a lot of screws and nails. Also, there's this rail from the old blinds up there, so we're gonna have to remove that as well and patch that all up, and then we can paint. Oh my god. Just ripped out like the whole wall. <gasps> Oh no. Okay, and check out this huge one. I totally need a lot of spackle and some joint compound because that is not okay. something so satisfying about filling up all the holes and just smoothing your wall out and I've said this before but I will say it again spackle and caulk are your best friends for any home project there are a lot of larger holes in this house made with anchor screws so those definitely needed to be addressed and also the blinds were a pain to remove because they had extra screws in there that were not needed and were a total mess so I was just so glad that they were finally coming down so I went around the whole room spackling the walls and the ceiling and if you do find that the spackle has shrunk after drying down, you can go ahead and do a second coat before sanding it. The camera's about to die right now, but I'm done sanding, so it's time to paint. Did you say paint? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Okay, he's ready. <laughs> We're painting all the common areas of the house with Atrium White by Benjamin Moore. So you guys have seen this in the dining room and also the bathroom at this point. And it just felt so good to finally get rid of most of that green slash blue gray color off the wall. My family thinks it's green, but I think it's blue. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And since our house is north facing, the living room really doesn't get a lot of direct light. So brightening up the space with a white color was crucial. The living room also connects with the dining room, so this color is going to roll into both spaces. I do plan on doing a fun accent wall in the entryway, so that is definitely going to add some interest once that area is complete. Why 
we're making use of the paint sprayer today and I'm just going to do that whole back wall since it's pretty large. The prep work definitely takes a lot of time, but honestly, it saves so much more time when you use the paint sprayer, so let's do this. Okay guys, so I believe this is my fourth project with this paint sprayer and I have to say it took a little bit of time to get used to, especially since there are a couple of steps that you need to take to start it up, but I definitely have gotten the hang of it and it has been such a great investment. This is my first time using it on just a flat surface like this wall, but it has saved me so much time, especially when it comes to projects with a lot of detail, like the beadboard as well as the board and batten wall that we did. And I just cannot recommend it enough, so if you guys are doing a lot of paint projects, definitely check it out. I'll have it linked down below. You guys, we still have our spider problem. Ooh, that one's kind of a big one. Hello, sir, can you please leave? Try to make a house look nice. It is looking so much lighter and brighter in here. I'm so happy to get rid of that gray. And now I'm gonna work on the windows. I'm going to actually paint the inside of them black. Our plan is still to replace these next year, but while we have them, I want to paint them black. That way we could see how we feel about them when we actually go to replace them because I'm still up in the air between doing them white or black. So I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments. Oh my God, these blinds have been up in our house for so long that I forgot how beautiful our windows are and how much natural light actually comes in through the living room. It just feels like a breath of fresh air and it also just reminds me of why we bought this house. We really love these windows, so I want to make sure that we highlight them. The first thing I need to do is just to sand everything down and tape everything up. I did not remove the windows to paint them because like I mentioned, we do plan on replacing all the windows next year. So I'm really not too worried about making this paint job last long term. All I did was clean them, sanded everything down, and then I taped it all off. But if you do plan on doing this long term, I would definitely recommend using a primer beforehand. These windows are quite old and have not been taken care of, so I think a paint update is just what they need to be refreshed. I'm going with Carbon by Bear, which is a nice deep black color, and this is also the same color that we use for the kitchen window as well as the fireplace mantle, so I think this is gonna tie everything in nicely. The paint that I'm using is specifically made for trim and windows, so it's going to be really durable for high touch areas like this one. Black windows are super on trend right now, but I think it's a classic look that is here to stay. It's very versatile and you could find it in farmhouse, industrial, or modern homes. And I think for my window specifically, it's a great way to make a statement in an otherwise very white space. Okay, it feels like we've been painting forever, but now it is finally time to take off all the tape. I'm still debating if I want to do grid lines down the center of the windows. I did this in my LA apartment and I thought it looked really good, but for this one, I think it might look a little funny from the outside looking in since the windows are white. So we'll play around with that and see how we feel today. Adding in these vertical lines seriously makes such a difference. It already makes the living room feel like a whole new space and I absolutely love the way this looks. I'm gonna take this and paste this onto the other side, but before that, I'm actually going to put up the curtain rod because honestly, this is a little bit more tedious and I want to work while there's still light out. So we'll do the curtain rod first and then finish up this window. So these curtain rods match the other ones that I hung in the craft room. They were really affordable and I just love how simple they are. And to mark these off, I actually put the curtain on them so I could visualize the absolute highest spot that I could hang them. And there's quite a bit of material that goes above the rod and this creates a beautiful pleating. So by doing it this way, I could see exactly where the top of the curtains hit. Thank you. 
I went with linen for a light and airy feel in this natural color. I love that they filter the light through but still give privacy so if you guys are looking for something similar I will link it down below. Once I hung them they just added so much height into the room and it just made it feel so much more cozy and pulled together and I'm so glad that I can actually hang up curtains in my home because if you guys remember my command hook rods in my previous apartment they got the job done but these ones are just so much more gorgeous. Welcome to another day of this makeover. We're in the basement today because we are DIYing our own coffee table. So I have all of my supplies ready over here. We're gonna make a fluted coffee table. I could not find one online that would work for my space. So instead, I wanted to see if there was any tutorials online that I could follow along. So I found this one from Sarah Lay, and I'll link it below if you guys wanna follow along, but I'll also have all the materials listed in the description box. So let me quickly go over the supplies we're gonna need. I have a 36 inch round panel right here. This is going to be the top of the coffee table and then I have two smaller wood rounds. These are 18 inches each and this is going to be the pedestal. So you're going to want to adjust this depending on how big your coffee table is. I have a two by four over here and this is going to be the support for the pedestal. And over here we have half round molding. I swear I've been looking for this for over a year probably. I could never find it in stock but luckily I got everything from Menard. So if you've been looking, try there. So you can see it's a nice half round and this is going to make our fluted shape. I kind of wish it was a little bit bigger but there was nothing else in stock so I went for this and I think it's gonna look great. The coffee table is gonna be 16 inches tall so I'm subtracting two inches from both the wood rounds and an additional inch from the tabletop. So for each of these two by fours we're going to cut them down to 13 inches. The six foot piece gave me five but if you wanted to make more you totally can. To attach it to the wood round I'm using brad nails to keep it in place and I nailed down two per piece. To secure this, I'm going to be screwing them in, so you want to make sure that you drill some pilot holes first, and with one and a half inch wood screws, I'm just drilling those in. So this is ready to go. I think it looks pretty good. And now I'm going to take the molding, measure it, and then cut it down to size. I cut these a hair taller than 15 inches and I actually bought 20 of these and ended up using 17 of them. And one major tip that I have for you guys is to make sure that you check them when you're in the store buying them. You wanna make sure that they are flat and straight, otherwise you're gonna end up with some really wonky ones and it's gonna be a lot harder to adhere them later. I grouped these into piles of 10 so I could keep track of how many I was making. And I totally wish that I had a miter saw table at this point. That way I could set up a stop block because that would have made my life so much easier. This step was definitely the most time consuming part of the project. So having a stop block would have been really helpful. I think this brad nailer has been one of my most used power tools so far. I've used it for so many projects, big or small, and it's just been so handy to have. And I love that this is wireless, so I would totally recommend it to you guys. With my finger, I'm filling up the brad nail holes with some wood putty, and once this dry, it's going to be a natural wood color. To clean up the excess, I'm just using a wet paper towel, and this is going to make it super easy to wipe clean and looks nice and smooth. To keep the top on securely, we're going to add some wooden dowels, so I did some geometry to find the center of the circle. I'll have a couple of YouTube videos down below if you guys want to learn as well. And I basically drilled a half inch hole and added the wood glue and then placed my dowel in. 
to make my life a little bit easier, I created a template as a guide for all five dowels in the middle, and this worked really great to get it all mapped out. I used that same template to drill more holes into the tabletop, and I also did a dry fit to make sure that everything was good to go. And I was basically following along with the blog post, but in her post she was using a marble tabletop, so that's why she built the pedestal separately. But if I were to do this again, I would have just screwed the 18 inch wood round into the 36 inch one. That way I could just keep it securely in place without having to do the additional work with the dowels. But both methods work totally fine, and if I wanted to replace the tabletop in the future, this also makes it a little bit easier as well. Okay guys, so it is finally time to paint this. I'm using a semi-gloss finish so that's a little bit easier to wipe down and clean. And for this base, we wanna make sure that we get into all the little crevices. So I'm taking my time to fill in each one. While that first coat was drying, I painted the underside of the tabletop with just one coat and I'm leaving the center untouched. I know no one is probably ever gonna see this part, but I just wanted to paint it just in case. I did a second coat of the paint on the pedestal base and after that was dry, I just attached the tabletop and with a roller, we're going to paint the entire surface. Prior to this, I did sand down the tabletop and I totally forgot to press record, but definitely a step that you don't want to forget. I would also recommend using a primer for this as well, but I really wanted the wood grain to show some texture through the paint, so I decided to skip that part. After totaling up all the materials, this project cost $166.54 before tax, which is honestly crazy because if you were to buy one that looked exactly like this online, it would be quadruple the price, so this project was easy and affordable and I think it looks amazing. Now our table is ready and it's going to be perfect for the living room and I am absolutely obsessed. It's rock time! Oh my god, this is a mission. Online, this rug actually looked a lot more brown, but as you can see in person, it has a lot more blue tones, which I'm not mad at. So we're gonna work with this, and I also have paint cans over there to weigh it down because it is super curled up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in all the furniture and get this place all set up. Okay, so this is the general layout. I think it looks really good. Eventually, we want to get rid of that ledge, so this is going to be a lot more open, and it's not going to get in the way of this entrance, but it's fine for now. I think it looks pretty good. And also, this table, oh my god, I am in love. I'm so happy with how it turned out, and it looks perfect in the space. Okay, we are like 90% of the way there. I bought some new decor pieces, so I'm gonna start styling and then we can reveal. I'm placing a planter closest to the window and I hope you don't mind that I'm playing musical plants around the house, but I did not wanna buy new plants during winter. So this is gonna do for now. On the other side of the console, I found a black blanket ladder, and this is actually similar to the one I DIY'd in my LA apartment. I really love the way that looked. And this is a great way to add storage as well as height to the room. So here I was trying to figure out where to place my DIY paintings, but after looking at them from afar, it really was not proportional and balanced to the TV and the TV console. If I had a third painting, I think that would work a lot better because right now it's giving me a pyramid look and I'm a bit picky with what I hang up on the walls. So for now, I'm going to leave it blank until I find the right piece. The reality is creating your home takes time and I definitely wanna find something that will complete the room rather than just hanging something up for the sake of filling up empty space. I wanted to style the coffee table with some decorative and functional pieces and the tone in all these items leaned a little bit cooler which I think tied in really nicely with the colors in the rug. 
I'm adding a brass floor lamp to create a little reading nook on the chase side. And I actually really love the pillows that come with the sofa. So we're pairing those with some fun textured and patterned throw pillows for even more comfort. I just finished styling and it looks so good in here. And before I show it to you guys, let's take a look back at the before. We had gray walls, temporary blinds, and not too much going on in this space. And with a couple of DIYs, including the windows and the new coffee table, which I'm obsessed with, everything just feels so much more pulled together. And it also feels very cozy in here, which I'm so happy about. So without further ado, here's a look at the after. I'm dying to know your thoughts on this makeover, so let me know in the comments below which project you guys like the best. I still cannot get over these windows. I think they look so good. And if you guys have similar windows and wanna make an update, this is a really easy way to do it. And again, a huge thank you to Cassidy for sponsoring today's video. This couch is honestly everything. I cannot wait to have a movie night in here tonight. And next, we're going to tackle the entryway because if you look behind me, this totally does not go with this aesthetic. So that is coming up super soon. And if you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more behind the scenes and see how this space progresses, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram. I post on there every single day. And that is it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!